we're here with Anderson Cooper. Uh, so this book is about your mom's side you of know, the family. You know, I was told that you guys didn't have a copy of the book, so I actually stopped at Barnes & Noble down the block as I was coming here, <laughs> ran in, bought a copy, and then came here. That's so embarrassing. You bought your own yes, book? Yes, I did, yes. <laughs> I, I got a text on the way, like, um, do you have a copy of the book with you? Because they don't have one. I'm like, what, like I walk around with my book like a schmuck? Did you, fi like, did you find it right away? Or did I you just have happen to walk around the city like, hey, Anderson Cooper's got a new book. The worst would be if you walked around like this. <laughs> just like to make sure people saw it was you. Um, this is your mom's side of the family. Yes. The Vanderbilt. Yes. For those who don't know the history, uh, yeah, they, uh, the, this guy, Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, made a ton of money in the late 1800s. Uh, he uh, started with nothing and built a steamship empire and then a railroad empire. You can see a statue of him outside Grand Central Station, which, by the way, he built for himself. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. When you got a little extra scratch yeah. lying around, right. why not? It yeah. wasn't like a grateful city built a statue for him. He was like, you know what? I'll do it myself. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. Much this. like you, he actually went to the statue store and bought it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, do you have a, do you have a Cornelius? <laughs> Carried it out. And so around. The, the book is really just about this. I mean, when he died, he was the richest man in the world. He had a one out of every twenty dollars that was in circulation was his. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I'm wondering where it went. But um, <laughs> but that's what the book is really about. It's about I never wanted anything to do with that side of the family. I, I I felt like no good could come from it. And I was really interested in sort of how the pathology, his money obsession how it infected subsequent generations in the family. Your uh, mother lived a, a long, interesting life. Yes. Um, she recently passed away, but yes. you, uh, as, as a very good son, uh -huh. uh, you helped her have a oh, social no, media footprint. Well, yeah. you so my mom died when she was 95, but like around the time she was 91, it was, she was getting a little depressed. A lot of her friends were dying, and she wasn't, she, was an, uh, she works as an artist as well, and she wasn't painting. So I thought, how am I gonna like, get her motivated again? So I introduced her to Instagram, which she thought was like magic. Yeah. And she, at first she was really, she, she was like, why would anyone want to follow me? I was like, trust me, though, there's some people. And uh, I got her on Instagram, and then I created an account for her artwork to like, get her out of bed and paint. And she was like, well, who's going to deal with the customers? And there really wasn't anyone to deal with the customers. So I was like, I know what you're asking. I'll do it. <laughs> so. I, my mom was like, well, you should invent a character. You can't do it as yourself, because you can't be like, hi, I'm Anderson. <laughs> uh, what size frame do you want? <laughs> right, right. So my mom, we, my mom took great pleasure in this, and she was like, OK, why don't we invent a lady of a certain age named Monica, and who is a longtime trusted assistant, and you be Monica, and you answer all the DMs on Instagram <laughs> to buy my artwork. And that's what I did for three years. Wow. Yeah. I would be... Very well done. I would be, literally, I'd be in Baghdad and, <laughs> you know, in between things, I'd be like, would you like a laminated white <laughs> frame? Yeah, as Monica. Well, and people would be like, what's it like working for Ms. Vanderbilt? I was like, oh, she's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she picked the name. I don't know, yeah. I, I was like, like couldn't that... it be a guy? But apparently, no, it couldn't have been. I like as soon as she got involved with social media, she realized it was a good platform to lie on. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'll actually use that as a transition. You've done something fascinating. Yeah. Um, you have actually uh, interacted with some people who got very deep in this QAnon world. Yes. Uh, to the point that they had and embraced conspiracy theories about you, like yes. some really horrifying things. Yeah. And yeah. how did you end up reaching out and, and talking to one of them? Um, well, one of them, well, there was a person in a documentary that CNN was doing about QAnon, and this guy, I think he was in Australia, who believed that I ate babies. Yeah. And um, currently, and, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and that was just one of the QAnon beliefs. You know, Q, I mean, it's just, it's insane. It's based on age old, like anti-Semitic tropes. Uh, and anti-Catholic tropes, the whole thing of like, you know, blood libel, Jews eating the blood, you know, drinking the blood of children. The Nazis said that. That's what QAnon believes as well, but it's all celebrities and people on television. And uh, yeah, so I interviewed the guy. I, cause he's now, the first guy had now renounced his beliefs. And I wanted to know like, did you genuinely believe this that I like was eating babies? And he was like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. And he was like, I'm sorry, you seem like a nice guy. I was yeah. like, oh, thanks. <laughs> 
I was like, no, don't, don't make any definite decisions. See how, you know. I mean, those moments must be nice, but obviously they're few and far between, right? Like, yes. there's, we, I feel like there's not a wave of people renouncing QAnon. No, 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 I did, I've interviewed another guy who uh, reached out to me on, on direct message to tell me that I was gonna be executed, I think it was last March in Washington. And uh, I was like, I mean, does he really think this? And so I actually reached out, I was like, you know, how do you, wh why, why that date? I was just sort of curious. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, we started talking and he seemed interested in talking and I ended up interviewing him and, and it was fascinating. You know, he had a family, he had a, a life and he believes the Vatican has fallen and the Pope has been arrested and that Joe Biden is not president, but it's somebody in a costume that looks like Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to finding out which one of you guys is right. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for being here. Congrats on the book. It's always thanks. nice to see you. And Scooby 360 airs weeknights on CNN. And Vanderbilt, The Rise and Fall of an American Dynasty is out now.